Welcome home, brave heroes, and Kai Lords alike. I'm Ash, this is Ash Quest, and today we are going to continue our lone wolf adventure from Flight from the Dark. We just finished creating our character mostly, and the next few sections are going to go over more rules with which you'll already be familiar if you are a lone wolf enjoyer. So I'll probably skim over them a bit and just try to paraphrase what they are. Uh, we just got done rolling for how many gold crowns I'll start the game with. I have eight, and the next section tells you how you can carry items and weapons. We can carry no more than two weapons during our adventure. If we pick up a third weapon, we'll have to drop one of the weapons we have. There's not much of an advantage to having multiple weapons. You can't dual wield or anything like that, but it does increase the chance that you'll have a weapon available to use with your weapon skill. My weapon skill is a Warhammer, or is proficiency with a Warhammer, ironically. And if I do acquire a Warhammer, I'll have plus two combat skill with any combat that I engage in. Most weapons are carried either sheathed or tucked into your belt. Backpack items, anything in the text that is a backpack item. It'll go into my backpack. This includes meals. I can have eight and no more than eight in my backpack. There are also special items and they don't have to be in the backpack. They can be equipped um, elsewhere on my person. It'll say in the text if that is the case. Food. If you don't have any food when you're instructed to eat a meal, you'll lose three endurance points. However, this isn't relevant to me because I have the Kai skill of hunting. Gold crowns. That's the currency of Summerland. A small gold coin. I can have a maximum of 50. I currently have eight. Potions. I'll be informed of any potion I find effects when swallowed. And all potions are backpack items. There are rules for combat. The sequence for combat is as follows. Will add any extra points gained through my Kai disciplines, equipment, or special items to my current combat skill total. My current combat skill is a very respectable 17. I'll subtract the combat skill of my enemy from this total. The text will tell me what the combat skill of my enemy is. And the result is my combat ratio. Now, the combat ratio won't change after I get into a fight with an enemy. That enemy and myself will always have the same combat ratio. I will then choose a number from the combat, or not, not the combat results table, I'll choose a random number from the random number table. And if that number was say three, and the combat ratio was say plus five or plus six, I chose a three. All I have to do is find exactly who is losing what hit points here in the results table a combat ratio of plus five plus six and a roll of three means that the enemy is going to lose eight endurance points and the player character or lone wolf or myself is going to lose three in that round that could very well mean that one of us dies if our endurance points are low enough to begin with uh, but that would necessitate an end to the combat, and then I would be able to resume my adventure. I'm using a couple of house rules. If you missed them in the first episode, I'm actually rolling a 10-sided die, which is actually suggested by this newer Home Guard Press text of Flight from the Dark. So they are okay with us using a 10-sided die. I love that. And I'm utilizing save points. I will take advantage of Going back to a saved point, I'll write the number of the section down on my action chart. And if we die due to a bad choice, an instant death, we will not end our adventure. We'll go back to our save point. If we die as the result of fighting an enemy, I'll retry the enemy up to two times. And if I can't win due to luck of the draw, I will simply find another route around the enemy. And if I can't, if the enemy is my only path forward, then I will fight the enemy until I win. I suppose I could say, if I lose against the enemy five times, that's the end of the adventure. We, we'll, we'll revisit that. But let's continue. 
uh, during your adventure, you may be given the chance to evade combat. If you've already engaged in a round of combat and decide to evade, calculate the combat for that round in the usual manner. Uh, we ignore all points lost by the enemy, and we make our escape. And of course, we can lose endurance points as sort of a sort of a penalty for us running away, but only if the particular section allows us to do so. So running is not really an option unless case by case it says that we can. There are levels of Kai training. I am currently a novice. I could be up to a master. I hope that we can get that far. Beyond the 10 basic skills of the Kai master, awake the secrets of the higher Kai disciplines or Magna Kai. By acquiring the wisdom of the Magna Kai, a Kai can progress towards the ultimate achievement to become a Kai Grand Master. The Kai have many ruthless enemies, including the Dark Lords of Helgadad and their evil servants who give and expect no mercy. Use the map to help steer a course during any travel you undertake, and make notes as you progress through the story, for they will be helpful in future adventures. Many things that you find will aid you during your travels. Some special items and backpack items will be of use in future adventures, and others may be red herrings of no real use at all. So try to be selective in what you decide to keep. There are many routes open to you, but only one involves a minimum of danger. With a wise choice of Kai disciplines and a great deal of courage, any player should be able to complete the mission, no matter how weak their initial combat skill or endurance points. Good luck and Godspeed on the perilous journey that lies ahead for Sommerlund and the Kai. And Flight from the Dark now begins. One, you must make haste, for you sense it is not safe to linger by the smoking remains of the ruined monastery. The black-winged beasts could return at any moment. You must set out for the summer landing capital of Holmgard and tell the king the terrible news of the massacre, that the whole... What is that word? The whole... Hmm. Unit? Elite? Of the Kai save yourself, have been slaughtered. Without the Kai Lords to lead the regiments of the Sommerlanding armies, Sommerlund will be at the mercy of their ancient enemy, the Dark Lords. Fighting back tears, you bid farewell to your dead kin, your fellow Kai initiates, Rain Dove, Steel Sky, and Snow Falcon. Your own tutor, Master Starfire, the leader of your order, Grand Master Brave Blade, and so many others. Silently, you promise that their deaths will be avenged. You turn away from the ruins and carefully descend the steep track. At the foot of the hill, the path splits into two directions, both leading into a large wood. If you possess the Kaya discipline of Sixth Sense and wish to use it, I do not. If you do not possess this, or you choose not to use it, you may follow the right path into the wood. If you wish to take the left track, I can turn to 275. I think I'll choose after I save my game, and you could probably expect this to be a frequent occurrence, my saved game starts on page one. I'm the type that will save in any RPG after the adventure gets going, okay? I'll take the left track. I'm going to turn to 275. I must not come down here very often. Hmm. And by the way, this might be best listened to. Uh, there's going to be minimal sort of visuals, just me shuffling through the pages. This camera angle is not going to change for this series. And um, I'm, I might linger on the illustrations though, definitely. When, whenever we come across a relevant illustration, I will definitely present that to the camera. I'll describe it, what it is I'm seeing, just in case you're only wanting to listen to this series, which I, I definitely recommend. Uh, but please enjoy it however you wish. 275. You have followed this twisting track for about 20 minutes when you hear the beating of wings high above the trees. Looking up, you see a large crown approaching from the north, its huge black wings casting a gigantic shadow on the trees below. On its back are two creatures armed with long spears and wearing dull red uniforms. They are mountain gaks, small ugly creatures full of hatred and malice. You recall what you were taught about these beings by Master Stormhawk, your old Kai tutor, 
who was sadly killed during a mission in the Darren Crags. Many centuries ago, their ancestors were used by the Dark Lords to build the infernal city of Helgadad, which lies in the volcanic wastelands far beyond the Durin Crag mountain range. The construction of the city was long and torturous, and only the strongest of the creatures survived the furnace-like heat and poisonous atmosphere of Helgadad. Quickly, you dive for the shelter of a large fern tree as the crown passes overhead. With heart pounding, you pray that your quick reactions have saved you from being spotted. Pick a number from the random number table. If you have the Kai Discipline of Camouflage, add two. I do not, so we will simply roll. It's a seven. If the result is five or higher, turn to 345. You pull up the hood of your green Kai cloak and keep perfectly still as the Kron circles overhead. After a few minutes, you hear the frustrated curses of the Geox. Uh, I'm going to apologize if I say any of the names or terms of these characters wrong. I know that there are some Lone Wolf podcasts I need to listen to that will reveal the correct pronunciation of anything that might be ambiguous. I'll try not to bounce back and forth between pronunciations, though, so Geox it is. They cannot locate you. As the Kron and its Geok riders fly away toward the west, you slip back the hood of your cloak and breathe a sigh of relief. Your swift reactions have saved you from capture and a likely death. That grim possibility is driven home by the discovery of fresh blood and a ruined backpack amid the tall grass beside you. A quick search of the pack reveals only one item of use, a small glass bottle you recognize as a healing potion. If you choose to take it, this backpack item can restore four endurance points when swallowed after combat. You only have enough for one dose. Of course I'm going to take it. This is a healing potion. I'll put potion plus four BP or EP. Wrong game. You can now return to the track by turning to 272. Oh, and one final note, and I apologize for breaking the immersion once more. There's going to be times when I turn to a particular passage and you can see the text of the other passages adjacent to it. We're simply ignoring those, as any player should. Keeping a watchful eye on the skies above, you move quickly along, along the trail. You are familiar with this route and have traveled it many times. It leads to a village called Fogwood, a small cluster of cottages and a water mill. Its hard-working woods folk earn a living from the timber they harvest from the trees, from the ore they mine in modest quantity from the foothills, and from sheep which they graze on patches of cleared timberland. The village was given its name by the charcoal burners who first came here and made a simple forest life for themselves many centuries ago. After twenty minutes you reach the edge of a clearing where the log cabins and cottages are grouped in a small circle. The huts are unusually quiet. If you have the Kai discipline of tracking, you may turn to 134. If you do not possess the skill, you prepare your weapon and stealthily approach the huts. Turn to 305. I do not have tracking, so 305. Through the open doorway of the first log cabin, you can see the body of a villager lying face down on the rough stone floor. He has been murdered, stabbed in the back by a spear. All his furniture and belongings have been smashed and broken and not one piece remains intact. This is the evil handiwork of Gax were without any doubt, for they delight in the destruction of all things. A quick check of the other huts and cottages reveals a similar story of murder and wreckage. In the last hut that you search, you discover a Gax spear, proof of your suspicions. You may keep this weapon if you wish. More determined than ever now to succeed in your mission, you continue along the track. I'll keep the spear. I'll call it a G-Spear. But I'm ready to drop it if I find my Warhammer. It is 105, where we will save our game. 105. In the distance, perched on the branch of an old oak tree, is a jet black raven. If you have the Kai discipline of animal kinship, you may call to this bird by turning to 298. I wish to do that. I do have animal kinship, and I'm going to call to him. So, 298, what does my crow brethren have to say? B. 
beautiful black bird. The head of the bird slowly turns and it curses you. An instant later, it flies off above the trees and has soon disappeared. Shocked by what you have heard, you are now sure that the fledgling was a scout of the Dark Lords and is now probably on its way to inform them of your whereabouts. If you wish to continue your journey along the track, turn to 121. If you wish to leave the track and continue to through the forest instead, turn to 38. I have alerted them of my presence by using my skill. This tells you that not every time you use one of your skills will it be a good outcome. We're going to continue our journey by turning to 121. 121. You leave the clearing and press on, but only after a few minutes spent walking along the trail, you see a stranger clad in red standing in the center of the track ahead. He has his back toward you, and his head is covered by the hood of his scarlet robes. Perched on his outstretched arm is the black raven that you saw earlier. And here we have an illustration of the stranger. Perched on his outstretched arm is the black raven that you saw earlier. If you wish to call the stranger, turn to 309. If you wish to approach the stranger cautiously, turn to 342. If you would rather draw your weapon and attack, turn to 283. I'm going to call the stranger. I worry he's not alone. Three o nine. As your inquiring voice echoes through the trees, the stranger very slowly turns to face you. Your heart pounds and your blood freezes in your veins when suddenly you realize that this stranger is not a human. It is a Vordak, a hideous lieutenant of the Dark Lords, one of the walking undead. The robed creature utters a piercing screech that knots your stomach with fear. Summoned by the Vordak's piercing cry, a dozen Gyaks emerge from the surrounding trees and attack you. You fight bravely, but there are too many of them, and you are soon overwhelmed and pinned to the ground. The last thing you remember is the icy grasp of the Vordak's skeletal fingers as they close like a vice around your throat. Tragically, your life and your mission to reach Holmgard end here on this lonely forest trail. And that, my friends, is my first death caused by such an evil creature. Now, I actually want to write down the manner in which I have perished, so I'm going to take a moment to do that. In book one, killed by a Vordak. Very interesting creature. We'll have to resume our save from 105 now. So this does start us back fairly early. And I think it would be quite remiss of me to completely ignore this track. I think I'd like to see what other alternatives there are to that encounter. I did not have that encounter the last time that I played this book. And I don't know where it goes, what kind of battle it might lead into. So I'm going to go back to Calling to the Bird. And then continuing my journey along the track, going to 121. And then we see the stranger once more. And this time, my choice is to approach the stranger. No, I don't want to approach the stranger cautiously. This time, I'm going to draw my weapon and attack. I know the true nature of this stranger, and we cannot suffer him to live. Turn to 283. Yes. You are no more than 10 feet from the robed stranger's back when the raven squawks a warning to its master. He instantly spins around. Fear runs cold in your veins when you find yourself staring at the hideous face peering out from the shadow of its hooded scarlet robe. This is not a human. It is a Vordak, a lieutenant of the Dark Lords, one of the walking undead. Due to the surprise of your attack, you may add two points to your combat skill for the first round of combat only. And so, the Vordak's combat skill is 17. Its endurance, 25. That's pretty high. That's almost one for one as high as mine. Unless you have the Kai Discipline of Mind Shield, deduct two points from your combat skill for the second and subsequent rounds of fighting for the creature is attacking with the power of its mind force, as well as with a large black mace. 
And this creature is immune to Mind Blast. Oh no. Very well. I don't see this being a good outcome, but it is what it is. His combat skill is 17. My combat skill is 17 uh, plus two, just this once. So we have a combat ratio right now of two. Let's roll. Our surprise attack is a seven. This is good. This is good. But the results of this attack will be revealed in the next episode. That is time for me, friends. Thank you very much for joining me on this leg of the adventure. And we will continue this very soon. I hope to continue this series no less frequent than one episode per week. So with patience, we will make quite the journey. I'll see you next time. Have a great rest of your day. Comment anything you like down below and bye for now.